Hi guys and welcome to Factorio episode 2 of my Let's Play series. Hope you're all doing okay. So what do we have planned for today? We're going to automate red science production. We're also going to set up an automated smelting site for both iron and copper. And we're hopefully going to get some conveyor belts automated. Because crafting in my inventory just takes too long. So I've set two assemblers going in my inventory and some power lines to get started. And I'm just going to go stock up on both copper and iron because I'm going to need quite a lot for what I'm planning today. Now it doesn't matter much if I stop the copper for a little bit, so I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to craft a mining drill, a couple of furnaces. I'm also going to make a radar because I want to see how close the first biter bases are and things like that. It'll also help me get an idea of where other resources are. So as I'm going to be using an electric mining drill, I need to bring the electric all the way around to the copper mine. Okay, and I'm going to set up the radar somewhere near the sort of rough middle of my base, so it will give a good outline on the map, as you can see. Okay, so by now more iron will have been made, and I'm just shift, or sorry, no, control clicking, and you automatically take sort of the end product out of the uh, item you're clicking. So in the case of a furnace, if you... Uh, control click then you'll get whatever's been smelted and if you um, click say a assembler then you'll get whatever item you're creating in the assembler. Now I'm just trying to work out the best way of sort of mapping out this for the copper. Um, only doing four furnaces. The ratios are normally um, one mining drill, uh, electric mining drill for uh, two furnaces. So by doing it like this I'll have sort of too many furnaces to begin but it'll give me a good sort of outline spot so I'll know how much space it's going to take up. Okay so I'm setting up two distinct lines one for the copper um, ore to come through and one for the coal to fuel the furnaces and just run out of belt so I need to grab some more iron and uh, craft some more up. This is the other reason that I want to get these automated because it takes a long time to obviously craft them up otherwise so if I've got them automated they'll be able to craft in the background and I can just go to a chest and grab how many I need. So with the copper side mapped out I'm gonna put this furnace down roughly where I want the iron to start. Now because I'm using two lines next to each other a normal inserter won't reach so I'm obviously going to be using a long-handed inserter. So this will grab items from sort of one space away. So skip the first belt with the coal and it will just grab whatever's on the second belt. And once again run out of belts uh, and need more iron to make some more. So I'll just go grab that guys. and remembering to control click uh, create a couple more inserters and a few belts so the inserters are to bring the coal into the furnaces so I've got the long handed to grab the ore and then the coal to grab at uh, the other inserters to grab the coal so just hook it all up to power and that will start putting the coal in and once the ore starts flowing along the lines we'll start smelting copper so should have enough belts this time to finish it, so just pick up these, get them out of the way. Okay, so just find the best spot for this. Um, obviously I want it to cover a very large area, but I also hate leaving sort of tiny little bits of the ore left. So I just want to make sure it covers sort of the edges. Uh, so with that done, I'm going to set up the output of this copper line next. So when you're doing the output for the first sort of set, you always want to space it one further than you sort of think would be necessary. And that way, um, when you upgrade your furnaces, because as I said before, there's different upgrades for things. So 
one of the upgrades for the furnaces gets one square bigger so you need that extra space so that you don't have to take apart half your factory just to add in the new uh, furnaces now I'm just crafting up some more science packs because I need the logistics research done so that I can do the next bit easier because obviously I want to be able to split the coal so that I can bring it up to the iron area so I can smelt things and I'm also gonna be using more power so I'm gonna create another steam engine so just grabbing resources again and so as you can see at the moment my power is getting pretty close to the maximum I can produce which is why I need the extra steam generator so I'm just gonna put the first output that I've got obviously I've not crafted the other ones I need yet but we'll get the first furnace going at least I don't need that little bit at the end and I may as well just add it to the other end of the line so with some of the science packs crafted up already I'm gonna add them in so that research can start getting done because um, there's no point adding them all at once because obviously they get used one at a time craft a couple more furnaces up ready for the iron set and we're just pretty much waiting on science at the moment and resources but you're always waiting on resources in this game right so I may as well add the electric poles in for the uh, electric mining drills that I'm going to be using on the iron mines and little bit of trouble with my keyboard there unfortunately it's getting a little bit old and occasionally it doesn't register when I push the uh, W key put the last few research files in add that other steam generator okay so craft up the other longhand inserters I need as well for the copper I'll need some for the iron as well eventually so I'm going to go with a larger set of uh, furnaces for the iron mine because as I said before you don't always need as much copper at the start of the game but you need quite a bit of iron so if I set it up like this now I'll be able to sort of just add in the iron mines later um, without too much worry about having to expand the whole system so again I'm going to be using a dual line one for coal and one for the iron ore and just putting the output line in okay now I'm gonna run the copper line straight across the bottom here um, I'll be able to get the coal to, to the iron anyway it doesn't matter grab more resources again and add some coal into the furnaces don't want them running out until I've got the next set up ready so just grab some more so I can fill everything up so while I'm waiting for research and stuff I may as well just go around and fill up all of the coal uh, get some belts crafting as well because I'm going to need more of those and only a few researchers left to go add in the other copper extractors and once again out of iron just grab a few more So I'm going to set up roughly where the copper line is going to, sorry, the coal line is going to run up. I always mix those two up. Don't need it there, of course, because that's where the underground belt's going. And just connect it up. There we go. So again, just waiting on the research to be done, and then I'll be able to make the underground belts and splitters I need so grab more iron while I wait and may as well make the inserters that I need for the copper furnace section 
So I'm going to put the splitter just here and that will split the coal so it will go half to the iron and half to the copper and the electric setup. Okay, as you can see the map's expanded a little bit. Just grab resources again, uh, add in these so that once I actually have it all connected up, they'll be able to get it. And finally, research is done. Uh, I'm going to go with optics so that I get lights because obviously when it gets dark, it's harder for you guys to see. So hopefully we'll be able to get them set up either this episode or the next. And that way you'll have more chance of actually seeing what I'm doing. Okay, so just get the first couple of mining drills. I'm probably going to have four of these for the iron set. Uh, just need the resources to make more of them. So just run along the copper line, that should give me enough. So, yep, they're crafting up. And definitely got enough power for the minute. Although, I may as well make another steam generator just so that I've got it for later. So get all these out of the way, no point having them now. Okay, so just gonna fit these down. Um, I just want to sort of catch the edges with the mining drills so that it's a uh, leaves it in a nice state as I said before I really hate it when I have like one or two little bits of ore left behind um, and just connect it all up with conveyor belts a little too far no need to go that far down and there we go now I just need to add some power and that will be this bit done really oh and I need another conveyor belt just on this mining drill here so all connected and all set up. So with four of these going, that'll be all eight of the furnaces in use. So now I just need the splitter and damn it. <laughs> because I rushed to get this set up, I didn't have enough iron in my inventory uh, to get a splitter and a underground conveyor belt. So. I'm just going to add some iron into here and hook up the electrics to get the smelting going so that I can get the little bit of iron I need for that. So once I've got the underground belt set up, I'll be able to have the system running on its own. And oh, I'll still need some more inserters as well, of course. So just crafting up the underground belt first. And the inserters. So once I've added these in, I'll just have to worry about the outputs. Need more of them, of course, but there should be some iron smelted up by now, so that'll let me make the ones I need. Okay, and there we go. So just need the extractors now to put it onto the belt after it's finished smelting up. So they shouldn't take too long and I'll just bring this cable down here. So this is where I'm gonna obviously have my main line running. Okay, so just grabbing a little bit more iron, and then I'll add the red inserters in. Okay. So, that's the iron smelting set done. Just going to get a couple of splitters and a couple of... Oh, just need to grab some iron. So I'm going to grab a couple of the underground belts as well, and then some more conveyor belts. 
And I'm just going to even up the lines for both the copper and the iron, so that the copper and the iron run on both sides of the belt. And just got to wait for some things to craft up. Okay, so just add the last couple of the belts I need for this. And there we go. And grab the iron so that I can make some more conveyor belts. I'm going to need quite a few for what I'm going to do next. Uh, okay, so this is going to be sort of my main bus. And then I'm going to have crafting to the sides of it. So just set this first one up for red science and no I think before is better so I'll put it right there. Don't have to go too far and the thing with this system is you can expand it later just by increasing the length of the belt and the assemblers. So if I ever find that I need more of something, I can just expand it upwards. So just need some inserters and things like that. So that's the exit belt. Uh, it's going to run parallel with the iron and the copper. So this first assembler is making gears, so I'll need uh, gears for quite a few different things in the future, which is why I'm just letting them run side by side with the iron and copper. So I'm going to have the red assembler, or the red science assembler, about here. So that lets me split the gears into it, and I'll also split copper into it shortly so just need a couple more underground belts and things like that for this one so find the best spot for it okay And there we go. So just got to hook it all up with power and then get the inserters feeding into it. So just set that to red science and the inserters. And yep. So I'm going to grab my um, research lab and I'm just going to put it straight opposite that assembler at the moment. Later on when I've got more uh, assemblers researching or more as assemblers creating red science for research I'll have it run on its own line but for the moment I'm just gonna have it make uh, red science and throw it straight into the lab. Just grab some copper and iron so that I can keep making things and no new resources have really been found yet on the map okay so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up my copper production slightly I'm just gonna add in a second mining drill so I'm using all four of the furnaces okay and I'll play with the power in a second there we go all connected still only using one cable but I'm getting both of them running so that will now use all four of the furnaces that I've got set up for copper just grab copper and iron again that's one of the other benefits of it being on a long belt like that I can just sort of run along it and hoover it up so just waiting on some more conveyor belts 
and then I'll be able to extend the line so that I can set up the next area. Okay, I'm just going to craft up some more splitters and underground belts. Uh, you'd be surprised how many you use when you're doing a long system like this. Obviously the system will get extremely long before the end of it, as long as I don't hit anything like water. Um, it's always complicated trying to turn these sideways. And me being me, I completely forgot about that steam generator. Never mind, I'll add it in now. It's not like we were desperate for power yet anyway. Oh, and research is up. So I'm... Uh, there's kind of a few I can do, but they don't really give great things yet. I've no real need for most of them. Although, yeah, I mean... Steel's not a bad one to do, it'll be useful later on at least. Okay, next thing to do is automating the production of belts, because they just take far too long to make in my inventory, and if I've got a supply of them, they're useful later for green science as well, and it just makes sense to have them quite early in the production line. Okay, so belts use gears and they also use iron plates. So. Rather than setting these up on two separate lines, I'm just going to combine them onto one line. So I'll have the gears on one side and the iron plates on the other side. Now, obviously, I don't need the belts for a production line yet. So I'm not using them for, example, green science. So I'm just going to be storing them in a chest for now. And then I've got them for my own personal use when I need them. So I'll drop down these inserters and set up the assembler to make conveyor belt. Now I just need to add power. But I've only got one cable left in my inventory, so I'm going to need some more. And for that, I'm going to need some trees. So craft them up and we'll be ready to go. Oh, slightly wrong spot for that. There we go. All connected and there we are. Now... Because I've got two lines running into one, the insert is a little bit slow, and instead of adding another, I'm going to swap it out for a blue insert, which, as you can see, is much faster. Now, I've got a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to craft up some lights, so that when it's night time, you guys can see a little bit better. So once they've crafted up, I'll just spread them out throughout the place. I will make sure to put lights down here and there all the time. You'll have to forgive me if I forget occasionally. I don't often use lights in Factorio um, because on my screen there's no real need. I can see quite well. But I know that when the videos come up they can be a lot darker. So I'm just going to be adding the lights where I think I'm going to be working a lot at the moment. If you guys want, just let me know and I'll add more lights to other places as well. So that's all for this episode. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and please leave a comment. See you later.